Greetings, greetings, greetings. This is the True Lioness, um, Ashaki Ali, coming in with a video. It's been a while since I posted on uh, my YouTube channel. So here I am. If you'll give me just a moment, I've got messages coming up on my laptop. So let me fix that real quick. Um, I've missed you all. For those of you that subscribe to the, the channel, I appreciate you so much. Uh, for people that are viewing the videos, even if you're not subscribed, I thank you as well. It's just another form for me to get my messages into the, the universe and into the world. Um, I, you know, speaking our truth and using our voice to help others is of the utmost importance. So we should do that. So I've been super busy, um, which is one reason why I haven't um, been posting on the YouTube channel as much lately, you know, I've been focused on my writing. I'm working on finishing um, my uh, a book that I actually did the first completion on four years ago, and I chose not to publish at that time. It's a memoir. Um, I'm speaking about different uh, periods in my life, um, but at this time and at this juncture and this this space, um, I've chosen to rededicate myself to the, the this literary work um, to add a few stories that were not included in the initial draft and to just release it. Um, writing for me is very therapeutic and these stories need to be told. So that's basically what I've been doing besides Working on um, things that are, are near and dear to my heart that I have a, a, a huge passion for. And one of them is beginning my life um, advocating more in the respect of individuals going through domestic violence situations because I'm a two-time married survivor, but I've had up more than two um, experiences with it. Um, so just to give you a little bit of background, um, not to give away too much what's in my book, but I was raised in a house where um, my parent and my step-parent um, fought regularly and um, viciously for many years. So, you know, and in the neighborhood in which I lived, it was very common for you to see that. It was not anything, nobody made a big deal of it. Nobody spoke about it, you know, it just what it, you know, it is what it is. So when you grow up that way, some things that are acceptable, not acceptable to the society at large is accept, is acceptable to you because that is the normalcy in which you've been known. Dysfunction, I always tell people all the time, dysfunction has been normalized in many of our lives and that's why we we follow these patterns and behaviors into adulthood and I'm one of these people that have done the same thing um so in my book and going forward I'm going to be more vocal about my experience being a domestic violence survivor um and share you know pieces of myself and it is not easy for me to talk about this Yes, I am a talker. Yes, I am a writer. I've spoken publicly on many different topics, but not this one. This one is a very sensitive and raw subject for me. Um, however, based on my experience and sharing things that's very personal to myself and also painful, I've helped other people. When I spoke about sexual assault, um, I've had you know multiple people come to me and let me know or message me, you know, DM me about how thankful they were that I was brave enough to speak about my sexual assault, um, my experience in being a rape survivor. Uh, what they don't know and what others may not know is I was also molested at a young age as well. So, you know, my life is beautiful but there are periods and times, you know, there are many wounds that you will not see. And But I choose to live my life joyfully. And I choose to see life as a beautiful thing because it still is. And, you know, we all have a path and a journey. And it's unfortunate that some of us have to go through so many horrible things. But at the same time, it makes, you know, it has 
allowed me to be able to be so more to relate to people so much more easily to be so much more empathetic to others in their situations and circumstances you know there are stories that are way worse than mine um, but also you know my life and the person that I am today is a testament to you know the strength of the human spirit uh, because there's no way that I could possibly function the way that I do and perform on the level that I performed and to just like I said be the person and the individual that I am if it weren't for the strength of the blood that courses through my veins, you know, my lineage and those that support and love me, um, it wouldn't be possible. So let me get right on into it. Um, a little bit, I'll share a tad about my, uh, mo the worst, domestic violence situation that I have experienced. So I was married very young. I married at 19. My husband at the time was 20 years old and he was very, very, very abusive. Um, what people need to know and understand is that domestic violence is not about mental health issues. It's not about substance abuse. It's not about jealousy. It's not about any of those things. The abusers are only trying to exert power so they can maintain control. It's all about power and control. That's what it's about. Not to say that substance abuse and jealousy and these things do not play a part in the mindset of people that abuse uh, or in the mindset of the people that are victimized. Not to say that, but at the end of the day, those individuals that choose to use physical force, manipulation, coercion, and all the things that play into domestic violence are trying to exert power so they can maintain control over the victims, period. Um, and my ex-husband definitely um, was that. Um, I had no control over the way I dressed. I had no control over who I saw, when I, you know, he controlled who I saw, when I saw them, where I went. Um, uh, who I had conversations with, you know, I could not even use the bathroom alone. It was on that level. Um, the beatings were daily and they were vicious. I've been beaten in cars. I've been drugged downstairs. I've been kicked with steel toe boots. I've been thrown through glass doors. I've been raped by my husband. I have been um, just accosted and assaulted on every front during that I was at that time. And I've had people ask me why I didn't leave. That's the worst thing that you can ask someone that's going through that type of situation because a lot of things come into play that are not seen on the surface. First of all, a lot of times the victims love that person and they feel like they can change him. Not only that, they may be controlling them economically. Maybe they don't have the means. Maybe they don't have a vehicle of their own. Maybe they are afraid that that person will kill them if they leave or hurt their children. There's a lot of pieces of the puzzle that aren't seen on the outside when you haven't been through those types of situations. So don't ask anyone that's in that situation, why don't you just leave? Because it's not that easy. My ex-husband was so possessive over me to the to the point that I was not safe even leaving my job. Um, I used to work uh, with a male nurse who worked night shift. Um, he was my relief at the end of my shift at 11 o'clock. He would walk me to my car um, after we would count the narcotics and get everything together. When the nights that he worked, I knew I would be safe because he would walk me um, to my car to make sure I got got in that car and got out of that parking lot because he had attacked me in that parking lot on multiple occasions. Um, I wasn't, even after I did uh, put him out of the home, he would still break into my home. He would break in the windows. He would pick the locks. You know, it. I could not sleep. It was, you know, I kept clothing in my car because I used to have to make quick escapes. My oldest son, I'm um, at the time, was about three years old. 
Um, I never used to want him to be at home. I used to send him to my mother's house all the time because I didn't want him to be exposed to what was going on. Uh, it was very volatile, very, very volatile. And, you know, fortunately, I didn't lose my life, but I almost did. Um, I ended up um, on one occasion right at Christmas in the year 2000, a few months after we had been married. Um, he brutalized me so severely um, that and you know a lot of other things happened which you know I'm writing that book and I'm going to put everything in there but anyway not to go into too much detail re-traumatize myself because you know those wounds don't go away and it's like scratching a scab off of a sore you know nevertheless I ended up in ICU I was in intensive care uh, for almost a week because my organs were shutting down at 20 years old. Um, and then, you know, I ended up getting out of the hospital and him still not leaving me alone. You know, what was my saving grace was few prior some months prior to that um, I was at home I had gone out to the movies with a friend um, he had you know we'd go back to my house we were not dating or anything like that he just came in because I was very nervous and just all over the place and my ex-husband kicked the door in I grabbed the phone to call the police he knocked the phone out of my hand but the phone recorded 911 recorded what went on and he proceeded to beat me that night but that beating was recorded by 911. That same phone call ended up being played in court um, when he ended up being in there for criminal domestic violence, high and aggravated nature. And that is that phone call and all of the warrants and all of the reports that I had made over the, that period of time um, helped to get him put into prison for what he had done to me. But it didn't come easy. Even after my abuser was in prison, I struggled with post-traumatic stress syndrome. I drank very heavily. I could not sleep. You know, I drank to sleep. You know, it wasn't me being a party girl. It was really me trying to deal with the severity of what had been done. I was shell-shocked, too, so to speak. Um, it took years for me to kind of find my way and then I still didn't find my way so I ended up you know got away from him I moved away I moved to New Jersey I lived there and um was you know numb I walked around numb for years I met my second husband we began to have children but he was also he had instances where he was abusive as well and um I remained in that relationship 10 years 10 years, had children with them and all of these things. I did start coming into my own until 2013 when I left the community in which I had lived for a very long time. Moved to another city, which is Charlotte, North Carolina, where I am now. And began to find myself again. I picked the pen up after I hadn't written for many years. I always loved to write. I've been writing stories all my life. Uh, but I had, you know, gotten away from that. Started making jewelry. I started doing art again. I started working out, making new friends, making new connections, becoming more active in all things African. And the Black Empowerment Movement is what I call it. Um, consciousness. People call it a conscious community. Whatever, what have you, whatever term you want to use. I got very active there. And all the things that had been lying dormant for so many years, I began to reconnect with them. Um, and, you know, I realized, you know, a lot of things between 2013 and today, a lot of things have changed. A lot have, of truths have come forth. Um, a lot of relationships that I had for many years, fam, fam, familial relationships and friendships have come to an end. You know, they reached the expiration date and that's fine. But today, 
the woman that you see today? Am I still affected by everything that I've been through? Absolutely. But do but am I prison a prisoner to it? Absolutely not. I live a great life. When I wake up in the morning now, first of all, I can sleep peacefully. You know, all my life I've had insomnia. And I had to kind of sit and do a reflection as to why, you know, even at a young age, I could not sleep. Never could really feel like I could get a full night's rest. I always felt like I was on edge. Always feeling like I'm just, my, my nerves are just all over the place. And the things that were strange to other people brought me so much peace. Being in the woods by myself and these types of things brought me a lot of peace. And I always wondered why. And I realized because I was living in volatile situations as a young girl, growing, and then, you know, all the things that occurred during my youth into adulthood at a time that I should have been really enjoying life, teen mom and abusive relationships. And, you know, and then to become an adult and still not be getting it. It's only until I got in my 30s that I really started to mellow out and find my solace within the dysfunction that has been my life. The last, over the last year and a half, I've really, really gotten into myself. Um, Some of the truths that have come to pass and been told to me throughout the last year have been very painful. And I am still in dealing still dealing with that. Um, the after effects of all that has been said and done to me. However, what I've done with that is to put that in my tool belt to help other people. I thank people, I thank, you know, I'm thankful that truth has finally been told. Because now I can have, I can move forward, you know, not keep wishing and wanting for something that's not going to happen. Um, so Andrea D. Berry, um, I love her dearly, but she is not me. She is the old version, <laughs> like a, a old iPhone. She's the old version. But this individual, Ashaki, that sits before you today. I'm secure within myself. I sleep well at night. When I get up in the morning, I look in the mirror. I love the person that I see. I'm strong. I am intelligent. I am beautiful. I am worthy. And I've survived. Despite everything that's been done. And I'm still able to smile. I'm still able to love. I'm still able to be empathetic towards other people, caring. And, you know, and I'm still moving forward with my life. Um, this is not the end. And for everything that's been done, it's added, you know, muscle to my spiritual spirituality. I've become very grounded in practices and I'm still growing. Um, still a lot of areas that I wish to improve. Uh, however, when I look back at the, in, the, in, the totality of my life, I could have ended up in prison, dead, or insane. And I'm none of those things at all. So, you know, I said all of that, and I shared all of that to tell you and whoever else within the sound of my voice, if you are feeling hopeless and helpless and lost and confused, if you're going through those types of situations, if you are struggling with what has been done to you, you know, in the past and present, seek help. Reach out to someone because you don't have to suffer in silence. You do not have to go through this alone. There are those of us that are hold, gonna hold you up. Gonna hold you up, gonna be there to support you and be that shoulder that you need. 
when I was going through my situation, I didn't have um, many resources. And a lot of people didn't believe what I was saying. A lot of, and still to this day, I'm accused of being a liar about, especially my first husband, about things that were done. Um, and it's very hard to be victimized all over again by people accusing you of lying. But there are those of us that do believe you. There are those of us that know what that feels like. But you can survive. You can live. There's life on the other side of this. Um, there is peace to be found. There is joy that can be felt. Even love. I ran from love for a long time. But even love is possible. It's the most powerful emotion that exists in this universe the most powerful so don't give up on yourself don't give up on life because life is still good i hope you all and, and my voice is trembling and i apologize but this is so emotional for me um, to share but it's high time that I begin, like I said, to use my voice to help other people. If you look at me today, and, and, and I'm not going to use a cliche, I don't look like what I've been through. But I don't. The things that I have endured in these almost 37 years of my life, it's almost unbelievable. As I read over my own life story, the things that I'm sharing in my new book, um, if I hadn't, if I had been there, I wouldn't believe it. It is, but true life is stranger than fiction sometimes, you know, and our journeys are, are etched in, in, you know, they're written to be a certain way because there are lessons that we come to this earth to learn. And I'm still learning, still learning, reviewing and learning. Um, but we're in a period of time now that... You know, new things must come forth, but we got to shed off the old. And the only way we can shed off the old is that if we confront them, if we confront them. So I'm confronting my past, um, the things that I am not happy about, some things I'm very, I'm not proud of, some things I am. Um, but I survived it all. And so can you. So can you. Uh, for those individuals that are viewing this video, if you will, if you choose to, if it's in your spirit to share the video, please do. Peruse the other videos that I've made. Um, please do. Make sure you like it. Um, uh, if you like it, comment below if anything that I've said resonated with you, or if you want to ask me any questions, you know, I'm pretty open as you can tell. I'm going to take the rest of my day and do um, some love on myself because that's so important that we continue to, to care for self after self has gone through because, you know, we go through so very much. And for all of the people that have survived domestic violence, my heart is with you and I love you. We're family. And for those people that have abused others, Seek help. Seek help. Help can be found for you as well. You know, you can do better. Please do better. Because no one deserves to live a life under duress in that regard. Until the next time, I hope that you all take care. Live every day as if it is your last because no man knows the hour. And always remember, you live life as authentically as you can because it is yours and yours only. I appreciate you all so much. Peace and blessings to all.